Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A couple days ago, I did a video on Silver Effects Pro 2 that is included in the Nick Collection by DxO. In that video, I mentioned that another application that is included in that collection that I often use is Viveza, and that I'd be doing a video on it very soon. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you didn't see that video I did on Silver Effects Pro 2, I'll have it listed a link to it listed in the description below this video. Also, a little flag will pop up over here in the top right hand corner so that you could watch it. Um, also, if you purchase the Nick collection, I have a discount code which will save you some money. I'll have that discount code listed in the description below this video as well. Now, as far as Viveza is concerned, it's kind of like the polar opposite of Silver Effects Pro 2. Silver Effects Pro 2 is meant for, of course, black and white images. Viveza really is a great app for color images. And this time of year is when I find that I use it most, when there's fall colors. Now I have this image here, obviously it's fall colors. And Viveza will work as a standalone app. You could open TIFF files and JPEGs in it. But most often, if you're like me, you're shooting raw and this is a raw image. So what you would do is you'd use it as a plugin. It works as a plugin in Photoshop and Lightroom and I think in DxO Photo Lab as well. Anyway, uh, I have this image in Lightroom and I did some processing to it. You can see I said, did some basic processing to it. There's before and there's after, before, after. Now I'm ready to send it over into Viveza. So to do that, I'm simply going to right click on the image, go down to edit in and then down to the bottom, Viveza 2. And then this dialog box pops up and it will uh, convert the image to TIFF. Um, I'm going to use the Pro Photo RGB color space. It really doesn't matter though. 16 bits per component. Resolution I have set to 360. Again, that really doesn't matter either. Uh, most people have that between 240 and 360. And I'm just going to click edit. So now Lightroom will create this TIFF file and it's going to then open that file up into Viveza. And you may remember if you did see that video I did on uh, Silver FX Pro 2, I talked briefly about control points. Control points really are the main thing you do with Viveza, whereas maybe with uh, Silver FX Pro 2, you don't use control points quite as much. With Viveza, when it first opens up, you do have some global adjustments. So I could globally come in here like and adjust warmth or you know cool it down or whatever. I could do global adjustments. But most often, I'm using Viveza as a plugin in Lightroom, and I do most of the adjustments like that, the tone and the color and you know white balance and stuff I did in Lightroom already. So what I want to do now is just affect very specific parts of the image. For example, when you look at this image, most people, when they look at an image, they just their eyes first fall upon it. They're going to fall look right at the middle. They're going to look right in the middle of the image, and as this image is now, the middle is kind of dark compared to the outsides. So I'm going to do some things in here to just try to uh, guide the person's eyes to have the bright, uh, the inside um, comparatively brighter than the outside. Now, just very slightly. So I'm going to use control points. Now we have this very bright area over here in the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a control point. And what we'll do now is I'll place it down and wherever you click, it's going to look at the tone and texture of right where you click. And then whatever controls you move will affect that same tone and texture. So I'm going to click on the fall leaves here, right there. And you can see we have a bunch of controls. And then you can see over here, instead of saying global, it now says selective. It's going to affect uh, anything that is in this circle of influence. And even though that circle is overlapping the blue sky, this won't affect the blue sky as much because I clicked on the tone and texture of the leaves. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go over here on the right hand side and, and work it is um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move warmth to the right a little bit, right? And then I'm going to take brightness and I'm going to pull brightness down. So I want to make those just a little bit darker. That's the main adjustment I'm doing there. So I moved warmth up a tiny bit. We could move saturation up just a little bit, just a little bit, right? I don't want to go too crazy like that. So that is my adjustment there. And there's a before after there's before and there's after you can see it's a subtle adjustment, 
But again, what I'm doing is I'm trying to just get uh, people's eyes more pushed towards the center of the image because it's more pleasing to look at then. Now, right in here is really dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another control point and we're going to place it down right there. Now, again, that uh, area of influence is that circle. I'm just going to bring it down. And it's mainly going to affect this area right here. And I'm going to take brightness up there, right? Take brightness up right there. We also could just do the controls here if I wanted to. Like I could bring saturation up a little bit there as well. And like that. So there's a before after. There's before, there's after. You can see still relatively subtle what I've done. Now, um, over in here is kind of a little bit dark as well. As a matter of fact, I think I just want to make this just a little brighter, maybe. Just a little bit. Yeah, maybe more like that. So there we're going to get another control point. We're going to put this control point over here. We're going to make this area of influence much smaller. Just kind of want to brighten this up as well. We'll go over here, take this brightness slider to the right. So we're making that brighter. So now we'll do before after. There's before and there's after. So you can see how this area now is a little brighter and this area is a little darker. So it just has uh, the effect of when someone looks at this image, they're going to linger in here a little longer. Now what we'll do is we'll add another control point and we'll put it over here on these bushes on the far right. And bring that area of influence down a little more. This way maybe. So it's not affecting that other, um, this area here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take warmth up there a little bit. And we'll take saturation up there a little bit. And I'm not going to do anything with uh, tone uh, as far as brightness is concerned. And there is that here. We'll do before, after, before, after. So, so far, so good. Now I think I'll do one more on the sky. So I'm going to get another control point. I'm going to go right on the blue sky, right there. Now I'm going to make the area influence so it's covering the entire sky. Now because I clicked on the blue sky, it's looking at the tone, color, and texture right there. And it, won't, it will minimally affect anywhere else. So if I take brightness down a little bit, you can see how it's mainly affecting the sky. But I really don't want to do brightness. I'm going to undo that. What I want to do is increase contrast. I really like my clouds to kind of pop. And I think contrast will help with that. And we'll bring saturation up just a little bit. And we'll add some structure as well. Just like that. And I'd say I'm done. This is uh, the subtle adjustments I did to help train someone's eyes to look where I want them to look. So this is the before image. And you can see this big bright tree over here on the far left in this dark middle. It makes it a little more uncomfortable for someone to look at because they want to look towards the middle, but this bright area over here and the white clouds kind of distract them. But when I did my adjustments, just that subtle adjustment of brightening up, brightening up the middle part and darkening that just a little bit uh, just helps it, I guess, flow a little better and people look around uh, the creek here and it will just look a little more um, pleasing to look at. So when we're done, we're going to click Save. And it will then uh, come back into Lightroom because I did use this, of course, as the plugin for Lightroom. And we'll have the two images and then we could look at them um, next to each other. And then you could see what I was talking about. So I'm just going to open up the film strip. And um, this is now our edited image. There is our image before we sent it over into Viveza 2. There's after Viveza 2. Now I could do some further processing in Lightroom if I wanted to. Most notably, um, <clears throat> I could come in and go to Effects and just put on a little bit of a vignette. That will help to push everyone's attention more towards the middle of the image and allow people to flow through uh, the crick here and look around at the different trees on either side. So that's it. That's Viveza 2. That's another... Uh, application that I often use that's included in the Nick collection along with Silver Effects Pro 2. Those are my two favorite from that collection. And again, um, in the description below the video, I'll have a link to my video on Silver Effects Pro 2. I'll also have a link to uh, the website, uh, DxO's website for the Nick collection. And also I'll have my discount code listed there as well. 
Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.